In this video, we're going to answer the essential question, how do I use the zero product property to find the x-intercepts or zeros? We've learned that x-intercepts and zeros mean the same thing. To find the x-intercepts or zeros of an intercept form quadratic. So we've been talking about um, how to find intercepts or what the x-intercepts are, and we've done some estimating on how to find those, and now we're going to see that if a quadratic is written in intercept form, we can actually find the x-intercepts really quick. And let's start now with this section. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. Okay, so what is this thing in this in the essential question is talking about zero product property. And the definition of the zero product property is if the product of factors is zero, then at least one of the factors must be zero. Now I know that's math terminology, but it's something that you guys have been doing for a long time. You know that if you take any number at all and multiply it times zero, the whole thing changes to zero. So our example here is, let me change to a different color. Our example is here, if I ask you five times what gives you zero or equals zero, you would all say, well, any, well, we know it's going to be zero. Five times zero equals zero. Five times anything else is going to give you something else. So the zero product property says is if you want this equation equal to zero, you know that somewhere along the line you're going to have to multiply the whole thing by zero. And same thing, take a look at this. If, if I told you that a times b equals zero, then you would know something for sure about this. You would know that either a equals zero, zero times anything gives you zero, or you would know that b equals zero. One of those two numbers, one of those two variables has to be zero for the whole thing to change to zero. And in fact, we've got one more option. Both of them could also be zero. Because if both of them are zero, zero times zero is also zero. So we can force this equation, a times b equals zero, to be true as long as a is zero, b is zero, or one of them is zero. And now let's take a look at this in terms of a, of a, a expression that we're more familiar with in this, this unit. What if I gave you this expression, 4x times x minus 2, and I said to you, hey, what values of x will change this expression to 0? You can use the same rules as we just saw above. You could actually tell me, well, Mr. Z, here's how it would work. If x is 0, then 4 times 0 is 0, and then it doesn't matter what number is in the parentheses, 0 times anything changes to 0. So by changing x to 0 here, the whole thing changes to 0. And that's a little more complicated, not much, as far as the binomial. There's another answer to this question. If this whole binomial is equal to 0, then 4 times anything times that 0 also gives us 0. So you can actually do this. You can say, you know what, the other value of x that will make this equal to 0 is whatever the value of x is that changes x minus 2 to equal 0. So let's solve this. If we use algebra, negative x minus 2 equals 0, add 2 to both sides, and you're going to change this to x equals 2. Here's our other answer. If x is 2, then 2 minus 2 is 0, and then who cares what this value is? doesn't matter. It'll be 2, but 4 times 2 times 0? gives us zero. 20 times 50 times 1,000 times a million times zero is all zero. So the way we found the two values of x that change this equation to zero is, okay, we know this one has to be zero because that's multiplied by four, and then this one can be two, and that means two minus two is zero, and the whole thing changes to zero. So these are all examples of how to use the zero product property um, to say that if an equation or an expression is going to be equal to zero, then we can use this property to find what are the values of x that actually can make the equation equal to zero. And there's a very important reason why we're learning how to do this. Let's look at one more. We'll see this in a moment. Let's look at one more example. What are the zeros? What are the zeros of f of x equals x plus 4 times x minus 1. Hey, you've seen this already in this class, a binomial times a binomial. 
So the question is, what are the values of x that will automatically change this equation to zero? And when it says, what are the zeros, we're actually looking at the x-intercepts. So we're looking for the x-intercepts. If you graph this equation, where is it going to cross the x-axis? So zeros are x-intercepts. All right. So let's go ahead and find them. And we're going to use the same uh, principle that we used in the previous example. Well, if x plus 4 is equal to 0, the whole thing changes to 0. Because this changes to 0, 0 times this binomial will be 0. And if x minus 1 is equal to 0, then the whole thing changes to 0. So the way you solve this is, you just write two equations. Take the first binomial and set it equal to 0. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's do something first. Let's back up for a moment here. Why are we actually looking for the values of x that change to 0? Because we know that the x-intercepts have a y value equal to 0. Remember, this is our y value. So actually what we're doing here is, that's an arrow. Actually what we're doing is we're rewriting the equation. We're saying, all right, we're going to try to solve this. x plus 4 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. Since 0 is the y value, this is where we're going to cross the x-axis. All right, let's break this apart. Well, the two values of x that will make this equal to 0 are easy to find. Make the equation x plus 4 equal to 0, and make the equation x minus 1 is equal to 0. When we find the values of x that make these two binomials, or one of them, equal to 0, we've just found the values of x that change the whole expression to 0. And this is an easy solution. Class, you know how to do this algebraically. To get the 4 to go to the other side, we subtract 4 from both sides, and we end up with x equals negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 equals 0. There's our first x value. If x is negative 4, the whole thing changes to 0 because x plus 4 changes to 0, and 0 times anything equals 0. And the next one is, to solve this one, x minus 1 equals 0. What's x? Add 1 to both sides, and you get x equals 1. So the two values of x that change this equation to 0, so the two values of x that are the zeros, and again, I can say this, the two values of x that happen to be the x-intercepts are negative 4 and positive 1. So our final answer would be this. So x is equal to negative 4 or x is equal to 1. There is our final answer. Those are the zeros. A little bit too thick. Let me thin that up a little bit there. These are the zeros of this equation. These are the x-intercepts of this function. So you can see how easy it is to find the x-intercepts when we have an equation in intercept form. All right, let's go down to another example here. I'll go a little faster now because I want to spend some time explaining that a little bit better. All right, find the solutions to each equation. Solutions class, remember, solutions, this means the x-intercepts. Zeros, solutions, x-intercepts, they all mean the same thing. All right, well, let's take a look. We've got an equation here that's equal to zero. I need to find the two x values that can change this whole equation to be true, meaning the left side will be equal to zero. Easy enough. Take the first binomial and write an equation. Whoops. x minus 7 is equal to zero. And then take the second binomial and write an equation. x plus 0 0.5 equals zero. If either of these binomials change to zero, the whole equation is going to turn to zero. Well, let's go ahead and find this. We add 7 to both sides here, and you get x equals 7. When x is 7, x minus 7 is zero. When we subtract 0.5 from both sides, you're going to get x equals negative 0 0.5. So the two values of x that change this equation to zero, the two values of x that are the solutions, I'm going to move this over a little bit, are 7 and negative 0.5. So here's another way we can write our answer. We write, we write, the previous one we wrote x is equal to 7 or x is equal to negative 0.5. Here we're going to write it as a, as a uh, group or as a set. x is equal to 
pointy parenthesis either 0 0.5 or 7. It's another way to write your solutions or your x-intercepts. All right, let's take a look at the next one. It's a little bit more complicated, but not so bad. All right, what are the solutions to this equation? What values of x change this whole thing to be true? Change the whole left side to be equal to 0. Well, let's set up our two equations. We've got negative 2x plus 6 could be equal to 0. That would change it all to 0. Or we could say x minus 1 third is equal to 0. Now this one's easy on the right. We just add 1 third to both sides and x equals 1 third. There's our first answer. This one takes a little bit more algebra. First we've got to get the 6 to move to the other side. We subtract 6 from both sides. You've got negative 2x equals negative 6. And then remember class, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2 and that's going to get x by itself. So the negative 2 over negative 2 is equal to 1. We can cross it off and x equals negative 6 over negative 2. If you put that in your calculator, you will get positive 3. So our other answer is positive 3. So our final solution is x consists of the set of numbers that include 1 third or 3. There are two values of x that make this equation true. Therefore, those two values are actually where your parabola will cross the x-axis. Last question. Let's take a look and see. I've actually got two more questions here. Solve using the distributive property and zero product property. Oh, okay. So we've got two equations, and we're going to have to simplify them before we can actually solve them. Now in this one, if you learned my rules for factoring, this should look very familiar to you. This is the step right before you do, you, sorry, not factoring, the, the uh, steps for multiplying two binomials together. When you look at this, this is the step right before you finish. And remember how we did this class? If you look at negative 4 and positive 2x, you can actually combine them together because they're being multiplied by the same binomial. So we can actually rewrite this as negative 4 plus 2x and x minus 7. Again, if you were not using FOIL, if you were using my method of, of multiplying two binomials, this will be very clear to you. For those of you it's not clear, you should be following my rules and you'll see that this actually makes the problem very simple. And now we just have a, an intercept form quadratic. Let's find out the values of x that will make this equation true. The values of x that will make the left side equal to zero. The first thing we do is we set up negative 4 plus 2x equals zero. And then we also have x minus 7 is equal to 0. Again, either one of these turn to 0, the whole thing changes to 0. Let's solve the first side. So you've got negative 4 plus 2x. Let's add 4 to both sides. When we add 4 to both sides, we've got 2x equals 4. Divide both sides by 2. We can now finish this up. 2 over 2 is 1 and we have x equals, and if you do 4 divided by 2, you get positive 2. There's our first x value. This next side is simple. If x minus 7 equals 0, add 7 to both sides, and you've got x equals 7. There is our second one. So the solution to this problem is, the solutions are, x can be equal to either 2 or 7. If x is 2 or 7, the whole thing changes to zero, and we have a true statement, and we just found the places where the graph crosses the x-axis. Last practice problem. Now we've got a, ooh, we got a little problem here. We might, we might have some common terms. Let's see. Can we write, rewrite this with common terms? I'm looking here. We got plus two. Oh, let's see. Um, I think about this for a moment. How are we going to find the values of x? Oh, I see here. We're going to have to actually combine some terms. 2x, that's 3. All right, so let's do this. Let's take x times x plus 3. And if you look over here, class, on these two terms, 
2 is a common term of this. Take a look. I can rewrite this as 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. See if that works. From here to here, multiply 2 times x, we've got 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we were rewriting, this is a little more complicated, we're rewriting the right side, pulling out the common term, and now we've got an easy problem. We've got the same binomial in both of these terms, and now we can rewrite it just like we did in the previous example. This can be rewritten as x plus 2 times x plus 3. Notice again, we're taking these two terms and we're putting them together in their own binomial, and then we're writing the repeated binomial, and this equals zero. Man, once you get past that step, this problem is very easy. Because all we got to do is figure out what is the value of x that makes x plus 2 equal zero, and what's the value of x that makes x plus 3 equal zero. And these are both really simple ones. On the first one, subtract 2 from both sides, and you got x equals negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. That works. Subtract 3 from both sides here, and you get x equals negative 3. So our two solutions to this particular problem are x equals either negative 3 or negative 2. Now, class, some people might ask, do you have to write them in this order, the smallest number first? The answer is no. I could have written this as x equals negative 2 or negative 3, but I like to try, if I can, to put the smaller numbers first and then work my uh, way up bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's not a requirement to actually get this answer correct. So hopefully in this video you see how we can use this special property called the zero product property to actually find x-intercepts as long as we can write the quadratic in intercept form.